Welcome to another episode of Will It Work? Today we have the Neo Geo Pocket. Neo Geo Pocket was out when the Game Boy uh, Pocket was out. Not the Game Boy Color, but the Game Boy Pocket. And uh, Nintendo released the Game Boy Color shortly after the Pocket uh, was released because, you know, the Pocket was just still playing original Game Boy games, and, uh, you know, with some minor tweaks here and there, there were certain things that, I believe there were certain things you could do, uh, there were certain, I don't know if it was systems or expansions or something, that there was, like, some versions of something or other that uh, provided uh, a couple of colors, um, but not to a normal black and white pocket system. And, uh, but ultimately they went to the Game Boy Color and the Neo Geo Pocket didn't last very long and didn't have very many titles for it before they too went to a color system. Uh, so the black and white system is, uh, more rare than the color system, uh, because most people bought the color and the, as far as I'm aware, uh, the black and white system was not released in the United States. Uh, the color system was, but I don't think the black and white one was. And it was very limited even when uh, it came out uh, in the United States. So, the nice thing about the Neo Geo versus the Game Boy was that what they were looking to do was provide a system that could play a good uh, fighting game. Right? I mean, that's really kind of what it came down to. And so they were they were looking at how they would do their graphics and their controls versus what Game Boy was doing. And a lot of people sort of may have missed that. Um, and it, and so, unfortunately, you know, they, they had some really great games for this system, especially for the color system, which we'll cover later. Uh, but, um, you know, it just didn't catch on with American markets because everybody, you know, is very competitive. And there's no room for two, uh, I don't know, there's no room for two handhelds. You, you have to have one or the other in the United States. That's, that's how things are here. One or the other. Uh, I'm trying to just fix the camera up a little bit here so we can get a good look at it. So speaker, uh, on off, maybe, um, can't see what that even is anymore. Let's zoom in on that a reset or something option that's the option button uh and then you have this uh thumbstick which well you know people preferred the the x pad versus this but when you're playing fighting games and you're trying to do special moves you know where you gotta do like the crazy special moves this is really a nice little micro switch joystick which unfortunately people just didn't seem to understand or didn't care doesn't matter there's a link cable up here so you could link two systems together, which was always the thing back then. Um, volume sl sl slider wheels, headphone jack, um, power plug, runs on two double A's. Here also has a, uh, I took it out because it was dead anyway, which was the um, watch battery that lasts for about five years or whatever you want to call it. And here we have a cartridge, Samurai Showdown 2. Uh, pocket fighting edition and I believe this is just the black and white version so let's turn it on let's see what I can do about getting a display these are another one of those systems that just doesn't have a backlight uh, it's just gonna tell me the battery's dead that's fine See if I can get this to tinkering with the contrast a little bit here so you can all see it. Yeah, these lack of backlight, man, I tell you, it was a weird era in handheld video games, the choices that were being made for battery life.
So, you know, it's Samurai Showdown. You can pick your characters. Some different modes or something, I can't quite remember. Ghostly air in the heavens, darkness falls. His purpose to unite darkness and light. I just like some light. We can wash it way out. All these systems were like this, but you know, so it's not like you had a choice. You can't be like, well, that one sucked because it was there was no light. It's like for some reason they, they there was just this thing where there was no light, and this is blinking red up here because the. The, the watch battery's dead. It doesn't normally blink red like that. Trying to keep it in focus here for you, but it's really hard. It's just hard to see in general. Whoop. So, if you go back to like Game Boy, this, um, this isn't doing that sort of dot thing. It's almost like, you know, drawing the graphics out. And so it it has good animation, and it's not as blurry as it looks when you're actually playing it. Uh, and so it was just a, it's just a really good, strong little fighting system, basically, is what I like to call it. Um, but it didn't last long. I think there was like a total of six games for it. Most of them were fighting games. Etc. And then uh, they released the uh, the Game Boy Pocket Color uh, shortly thereafter, which I also think doesn't have a, a backlit screen. But I will say that you can find these games emulated, and uh, some of them, like Card Fighters Clash and stuff, are really fun. And so if you get an opportunity to you know play uh, one of the emulators um, or play a, maybe a clone of this, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, if you have good controls um, handy, you know not, you're not trying to play with your keyboard or something. Uh, these games are pretty good. They're a lot of fun. Uh, so, um, yeah, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy, uh, excuse me, Neo Geo Pocket from Japan. Uh, it works. It's a keeper. Yeah, let's uh, move on to the next console. Thanks for watching.